Hey, Bob Wilson is in the house and you're probably wondering why I introduced my video like that. Well, I was dared by Kim from Facebook to do it. And what do I get out of the dare? Well, nothing really. I just get to look stupid. <laughs> but hopefully you got a laugh and so did Kim. So, hi Kim. I did it. So now we can get on with the video. So in today's video, we're going to make this head wrap. It's uh, made of a mesh. It's basically a hat and it's made of mesh and you've got this band but you can tie your hair up at the back. Now this would look a lot better if I had dreadlocks um, or something like that with a lot more hair. It doesn't really look that good on me but it's really cool. It's a hat that I could wear on my hairs in a bun which is a lot of the time and you don't want to do your hair and you just want it all like shoved up and no one can see it. So you can also you can tie it at the back that one's just fallen out. You can tie it up at the back or you can just tuck it in so you can't see your ends. Of course if you had a mirror you could do a lot better job than what I've done. So I've also got this one. Manny's got one too. Manny doesn't have any hair. So I kind of just had to, you know, tie it up. It does look a little bit weird on him. Because there's room for hair which he doesn't have. And I tried to put something in there to make it look like he had hair, but it didn't work. It looked really silly. So, of course, you can have it tied up like that, or you can tuck those bits in. So, it's really easy to do. The length of the hat can be really easily adjusted. If you've got dreadlocks, depending on how many you've got or how thick and long your hair is, you may need... Uh, a different size hat so it's really easy to adjust the length of the hat and it's kind of a one size fits all sort of in an adult's range because at the back of the hat is a section that we don't crochet our strap into so you can tie that up as tight as you want so that gives you a little bit of adjustment on the head circumference with the length of your hair depending on how long your dreadlocks are because I don't know what you call it, but you can put all your dreadlocks up in like a wrap thing. Yeah, well that's what this hat's, hat's for. So, someone actually has the real name for that. Please let me know. So I've done two versions. I'm just going to take this one off so I can show you. Um, in the video, I will show you and tell you what size hooks I used. This, was the f this one here was the first one I did. I used a 5.5mm hook which is an eye size and a worsted weight yarn. And it did come out big for me because I don't have dreadlocks. But as you can see it still fitted me perfectly. And would also fit someone with dreadlocks as well. So this is my hat that I made with the 5.5 and this one I used a 4.5 which is about a size G. Sorry, a pair in my face. I've got a size G for the yellow one and a I hook for that one. And I'll show you the difference in the sizing. They've both got the same amount of rounds. So this hat is looks bigger but it's still got 13 rounds of mesh. You can adjust the amount of mesh rounds as many as you want. In the yellow hat I used single crochet for the band. In the blue hat I used half double crochet for the band. So you can change it up as much as you like. The opening part at the back here you can change that up as much as you like as well. You could probably even crochet further across so the gap's not so big. But yeah I really like this hat. It's a really cool design. Like I said great for dreadlocks. Oh got my ends to sew in but we won't see. Don't pay any attention to those. Who else hates sewing in ends? Me! So yeah, looks really cool. And I, was, I don't know if this will actually work. Let me take the hair out. But um, it looks like a bonnet. I don't know if it actually works as a bonnet. But when I finished it, no, it doesn't really, does it? But, <laughs> no, it doesn't work as a bonnet. Maybe if you spread out your straps more, 
the more room it'd work. Anyway, I just saw that when I was holding it. So I hope you enjoy the video. I'll stop talking now and get on with the lesson, hey? So, let's get started with the lesson. These are 7 ounce balls of worsted weight, or skeins as some people call them. Uh, that's equivalent to about 200 grams, so you can see that I didn't really use much at all. This was the main colour that I'm using, and this was my contrast colour. I That was basically just a scrap piece, hardly used any of that ball at all. That was just used on the band that I've um, done. But yep, that was the main section, and that's how much I used out of a 7 ounce or a 200 gram ball. We will need a pair of scissors, a crochet hook to go with your yarn. I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn. But I'm going to use a smaller crochet hook that is what's recommended. I'm going to use a 45 millimeter. Partly because I can't find my 5 millimeter hook. But I'm also going to try a, a smaller hook with this one that I'm making in the video. The blue and green one that you saw as well that was using a 55 millimeter, which is a eye size hook and I used a worsted weight uh, medium yarn which is the number four. You could also use eight ply yarn you will need probably an extra row of increase with the eight ply or the double knit yarn it's also equivalent to sports weight. But I have really loose tension so when I use the eye hook or the five and a half, it actually comes out really loose. So for me to use the four and a half millimeter, which I think is about a G, that's fine for me to do that. Because it won't be super tight because my tension's so loose. So for this hat, we can do a chain four or we can use the magic ring. So if you're going to do the chain four, you would slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring and you'll work into the center. But if you want to use a magic ring, the easiest way that I have found to do the magic ring is wrap it around twice, well using two fingers, wrap it around like so I just grab both pieces of yarn and work into the center. Pull up a loop. Just do a one chain to secure that in. And then I start from the pattern from there. We will chain four. The chain three counts as our double crochet and a chain one. We will double crochet into the center so into there, I'm just holding it like that because it's easier me, for me to do so. We will chain one, double crochet into the center. So the first round's worked into the center. Chain one, double crochet. And when I make most of my hats, I normally use 12 stitches. But because we've got this chain one in between, I found that when I did it with the 12 stitches, it was too bulky at the top. So we're going to use 10 in this one. So 10 double crochets. So chain one, double crochet in the center. So we will have 10 lots of double crochets and chain one. Then that's including our first lot of chains. So our chain th three. So this one counts as our first stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Chain one. Chain one. Double crochet. Chain one. Double crochet. Chain one. And this colour is called uh, corn meal, and the other yellow I'll be using will be called lemon. They're very pretty colours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I've done my chain one. If you're using a magic ring or you've worked over your tails, we can pull that yarn 
to close up the center. Then we're going to slip stitch into that third chain. So not the fourth one, which is up here. We want the third chain. So one, two, and three. I like to grab that front part of the chain and then also the back section. We'll have a loop underneath our hook. And then slip stitch to join. So zoom in a little bit. So there we go. That's the first part of our hat. If you want yours to be really baggy, my, by all means, put in those 12 stitches. If you've got a lot of hair, if you've got dreadlocks, um, or just a lot of hair in general, the 12 stitches may work for you better than the 10. But for myself, I don't have that much hair compared to some people. So the 10 is working great for me. We will be chaining up four, and that's a chain three counts as our first stitch. And then the chain one. Yarning over. We will be working into every double crochet, not the chain one. So going back to the same stitch. And working a double crochet. Chain one. Going into the next double crochet. Chain one. Same one again, double crochet, chain one. So every double crochet we do is separated by, by a chain one. Into the next stitch, chain one, same stitch again, chain one. So two double crochets and chain ones into every double crochet around. And you will notice if you haven't done your chain one because your double crochets will be too close together. And if you're anything like me you'll notice it on the next round, not as you do it. You've got to pull out all those rows, all those stitches. Chain one, next one, chain one, chain one. So I'm going to work all the way around. I'll just leave the camera going. This would be beautiful made in cotton as well. I think that it would be beautiful for summer. I'm making mine in acrylic because I'm going into winter in here in Australia, so cotton's not going to be much help for me when it's freezing cold. So there we go. You should be able to tell by looking at it if you've missed a chain one space because instead of being able to separate them like that, they'll be all squashed together. I'm actually preferring using this smaller hook too with this yarn. It looks really good. But if you're making it for summer, it, I mean, if it's loose, it doesn't matter. It'll be nice and cool to wear. So joining into the top of the chain three. Now, if you want to change colour, I'm not going to change colour in this one. I did for my other one. I had so many ends to grow, so in, it was nuts. But if you want to change colour, you would cut your yarn off, do a chain one, and then pull your hook and that yarn will come out. So we'll just pretend that I've done that. 
and then grabbing your new colour excuse me while I grab him some red here that will do it'll show better too so you'll be joining into here we can join anywhere around but into the top of a double crochet or the chain three so you won't have that loop there because you've already, you would have finished it off and sewn in your end you just put the yarn over the top of the hook hold it at the back pull through do a chain one to secure pull down at the back and then start your pattern as normal so chaining four alrighty so that's what you'll do if you're changing colors I'm not going to change colors on this one because I don't want to <laughs> alrighty so we are starting so we're chaining up four chain three is our double crochet and then the fourth one is our chain one now we want to alternate between one double crochet and two double crochet so we've got one into the next stitch into the double crochet not the chains we will work double crochet chain one and a double crochet into that same stitch chain one so remember how I said we we're alternating one and two so there's one there there's two there we need one into the next double crochet chain one oops I don't think it's the yarn I think it's this hook that's making this split this is a cheap hook so that's really what's doing it so we've done our one so our next one we need two so chain one and I notice the hook part there is different to what I normally use so obviously this hook might go to hook heaven when I finish this tutorial so the next one we need to do is one by itself so chain one into the next double crochet work one double crochet and a chain one into the next stitch you're working two so double crochet chain one double crochet and we're going to work this all the way around until we get back to the beginning of the round that we've got here I'll show you the difference like that's that's the difference this is one size smaller than the one below see how that's really big yeah really not a fan anyway continue on until we get back to here all right, so I know you think I'm perfect. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can you see where I've done my mistake? Well, I haven't done my chain one. Because as I'm going around, I'm just doing a few stitches, then looking back to make sure I've done it right. It's right there, or should be right there. See how it's not separated? It's really close together at the top there. So let's pull this back and let's see. I don't think I've done one. So we'll pull that stitch out. So yeah, there's no chain one there. So ha ha. I'm glad I saw that before I got to the next row. So I'll just continue on because I'm basically at the end of the row now. So just about finished. So always do that. I mean, I've been crocheting for about 12 11 12 years now and as you can see I'm still making mistakes you're not gonna be perfect all the time you are gonna be making mistakes 
it's very easy to do the great thing about crochet you just rip it out and start again so when we come around we will always end on an increase and the increase is when we're working two stitches into the same stitch so here is my last double crochet that I need to work into and that is going to be the increase which is double crochet with our chain one and a double crochet and we need to join into the third chain so one two three grabbing that loop at the front and also at the back There we go. Oh, and a little tip too. I don't know if you'll have this happen with you because you might be perfect. When I did my joining, let me see if I can show you on this other hat. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see how this hat's sideways, by the way? See that row there? Can you see how the gaps are bigger? Like here. Let's see if I can put it the right way. Can you see that now? How, they, how that row here is bigger? Oh, it's upside down. I'm looking at stitches the wrong way. Sorry, guys. See now? I mean, that one's massive when we this is where we joined this is our chain three and that's our last stitch of the round make sure that stitch if you're getting this happen that chain stitch the T make sure it's really tight I think that's what I have done wrong so when I got further up as I looked back and went Ew, what's happening there uh, it's here I tried to make that stitch really tight and it seemed to have helped the problem so if you're getting that that last chain stitch that we do do it tighter I'm not really sure why that's happening but I found by making that last chain stitch I think because this is chaining here and not a double crochet but that last chain stitch before we join I found if I did that tighter it kind of helped with the loose hole all right, so we're looking good. We need to work a chain four. We always start there with a chain four. And on this row, we did the increase, which was the two into the same stitch, and then one, and then an increase. Now we want to work increase, and then one, and then two, and then an increase. Okay, so I'll show you what that means. This is Canada's one. Into the next double crochet, we want to work a double crochet and a chain one. So that's one, two. Then we want to work our increase stitch. So going into the next double crochet, working a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet all into the same space. There we go. So remember how I just said it was increase one and then increase? Well, this row is, well, they will be an increase on that last stitch. So it'll be one, two, increase, chain one. So it's one, chain one. Next stitch, double crochet. Okay, see that? So it's got one, two, increase, one, two. So that means the next one is an increase. And that pattern will repeat all the way around. And if you've made a hat before, you will understand that a lot better. Um, it's basically the same thing as when we work a normal double crochet hat, but we don't work the chain ones in a normal hat. So you see that one? One, two, increase one two 
increase two in the same stitch. So I'll show you that again and then we will repeat this all the way around the row until we get back to the beginning. There we go. So work that all the way around until we get back to here. So I have joined to the third chain. I don't know how to show don't need to show you that because you just did it on the previous couple of rows. And now depending on the size of the hat that you need, the blue and teal striped one, this one. Dun dun dun. I did this many increase rows. I used a 5.5 or an I millimeter hook, uh, sorry, a 5.5 millimeter or I size hook. I used worsted weight yarn, uh, medium number four. And that came out a little bit too big on my head, but because I had the ties on it, it didn't matter because I, I tied it up. So it didn't matter that it was a little bit too big because you couldn't tell once I had the hat on. Um, I'm using, like I said, a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook for this one. Still using the same thickness of yarn, but I think this one should fit my head a little bit better. If it comes out too big, it isn't a problem. You can work a row of single crochet when you're finished around the brim of the hat. The hat part will still be baggy but you can make it still fit around the brim. If you're making this for a child, you probably won't need as many increase rounds as that if you're using the worsted weight yarn. If you're using uh, eight ply yarn or double knit for the UK guys, boys and girls, you may need another row of increase. So this is for the adult size. So to add another row of increase, I'm not going to be doing that, but I will show you how to start yourself off. If you've made a hat before, you probably already know what you're going to do, but if you haven't, I will show you. So you're chaining up four, that counts as the first three chains as our stitch, and the chain one. In the next two stitches, we will be working a double crochet and a chain one. So going into the next stitch, the sun has just come through the window. Sorry about that. So they've got one, two, three. Work my chain one. And then an increase into the next part. The sun always comes out when you don't need it to. Okay, so on that row you did one, two, and then an increase. This row you'll do one, two, three, and then an increase. If you need to add another row after that, you'll add four, and then work your increase. All right, so I'm gonna pull that back. Probably didn't need to pull all the stitches out, but I'm gonna go back to the beginning. So chaining up four, hang about for two seconds. I'm just gonna pull my curtain across. So what colour combinations are you using? That's better. You won't get the shadows now. What colour combinations are you using? Did you notice I haven't used any grey? Uh-huh. You know why? Because I don't have any left. <laughs> or oh, I'm sure there would have been grey in there somewhere. Chain one. Did you hear that plane going over there? I'm not sure if the camera picked it up. Chain one. So this row, we aren't making any increases. We are just working double crochet, chain one. And this is basically what we need to do. So 
this is the easy part. Hang on. Oops. This part of the pattern's the easy bit. Well, the easiest. It's pretty easy, the whole pattern. Chaining. Oh, did I do a chain one? Yes. So double crochet, chain one, in every space around. And you will continue doing this until we have the length of the hat. I will put Bev's Country Cottage link in the description box below the video or the more info box below the video and that will give you head sizes. You can use it as a guide if you're not sure. If you want this to fit, so if you've got dreadlocks or it's you're making it for someone to fit with the dreadlocks or for someone that has a lot of hair, you will make this. So it depends on how much hair they've got. But what I did for mine is I made the mesh section to fit my head. So I basically made it as a normal size hat. Then I added the strips, the tie ups. Okay. If you want, if you don't want it to have that extra section at the back to fit all your hair, you will need to stop making your hat a few rows short of what you need the length of your hat. Okay, so does that make sense? If you want it to have extra, because when you add the strap, you're actually adding length to the hat as well. I'll, I'll show you that now if you like, and then you can see what I mean. I don't know how well it's going to work at this camera angle. So I've got my hat. Just give me two seconds. So I have my hat, right? There's my hat. And up to here, that one row of half double crochet, that basically fitted my head as a normal hat. But this section here added the length, so it's added more length to the hat, which on me would make it a slouch hat. But because I have my hair up in a bun, I can tie it up like you, you saw at the beginning of the video. So if you don't want it to be slouchy and you don't need it to add lots of hair into it, you will need to make it shorter than what you need the length. You'll need to stop because when we add our strip, it makes it a lot wider. And I, using the worsted weight, um, I've done four rows of half double crochet. We can use single crochet too. I'm actually going to use single crochet on this yellow one that I'm making just to show you the two different styles that you can do. This is about about one and a half inches wide. Again, you can make it as wide as you like. But I really like this style. It is so cool. I had something in mind a while ago, but I just didn't think it would work. So I sat down and made it, and it actually works. So continue on doing your double crochet and chain one and now the camera's too high up Ready? and continue on until you have your length I will be making this one so that it fits my head as a mesh hat okay so I will see you soon I have completed my hat to this stage so far and I've completed 13 rounds of the mesh this would even make a really cool hat just like that uh, the 13 rounds on me is a little bit short. It comes to just to the top of my ears. If I was going to make this just as a mesh hat, I would probably add about three more rows. Because I like my hats to cover my ears. You could add a brim to this hat. You could use the wide brim. I will put a link to the video tutorial that shows you how to add a wide brim to the hat. That would make a really beautiful sun hat, don't you think? I think that would look really, really pretty. Because being with the mesh, it's open, and if this is in cotton, it would be even better. You've got the openness of the mesh, so you're not going to get too hot in summer. But still get some cover at the same time from the sun. So the next part of our video tutorial... I just need to move my camera down a bit. We need to 
So once you get the length that you need, we need to finish off. So we're just going to cut our yarn. Pull through that one. And now we need to make the straps. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've got a really strange throat today. So getting another piece of yarn. So completely different to the one we had so it's not attached to our hat or anything, it's a completely new piece of yarn. We need to make a chain and then we're going to attach it to the hat and you'll see what we do with it. Because if we have it to the hat and then crochet, trust me it doesn't work, I've tried it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is make a chain. And on the blue and green one, I did a hundred chains. And this was basically big enough to wrap twice around my head so whatever the head circumference you are making it for I basically times it by two doesn't have to be exact but you're going to complete your chains so using worsted weight yarn and about an eye size hook I made a hundred chains if you're using 8 ply or double knit yarn or sports weight yarn then you're probably going to make about 110 120 chains you'll want it quite long because it needs to be able to wrap around the head so go and make all your chains and we'll come back and attach it to the hat after we've completed our chain I have mine here and it's really long as you can see we will be getting our hat and then laying it flat making sure your back seam is in the centre there I've still got my, ta my tail hanging down so I know where mine is so we're going to get it in the centre there then we're going to go halfway between the centre and the outside of our hat so about there, it doesn't have to be exact it's just a, a estimate or a guesstimate or whatever you want to call it and I've actually cut my yarn already because I made a boo-boo and had to re do this part of the video so yours will still be attached to the ball. So we've gone into the stitch just with the crochet hook. You're going to yarn over and then we will be working a slip stitch. Making a chain one, cutting your yarn and then just pulling out like that. Alrighty, so we've got one of these chains done. We need to make the other side, don't we? We need to make the other strap. Or beginning of the other strap anyway so from your center you're going to count out as many as what you did before so one two three four you may have a different number that's perfectly fine one two three four and if you've got a row of single crochet around there you could have used that to make your hat a little bit smaller if you needed to or you may have wanted to add a different color you're just going to add it um, into the single crochet that lines up with those stitches. So grabbing your yarn, laying it over the hook and then pulling through. Now we want to make the other chain. So however many chains you did, I hope you counted them. <laughs> did you count them? I did. So I know I've got a hundred. We will be doing that many chains. So I will see you back when we've made the other chain. So now that we have all of our chains, apart from having like a heap of mess, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to crochet back down our chain. You should still have it attached to your hook. Crochet down our chain. And then when we come to the hat, we are going to work around the larger section. See how between our chains we've only got a small section? We're not going to crochet in there. We'll be crocheting around the really big section that is between your chain. So around this bit here. Alrighty. So, put that on the side so it's easy to see. Like I said, I use the half double crochet in the blue and green striped one. Uh, I am going to use the single crochet in this one. You could use the double crochet. I think that wouldn't have the same effect. 
but it depends how wide you want your band. So you, you're most welcome to use whatever stitch you like. So for the single crochet stitch, I haven't done one of these for a while, we will be going into the second chain from the hook. Don't count the one on the hook. So that is number one, and that is number two. And I like this little tip. I'm pretty sure it was from Beth in Texas. Hi Beth, if you're watching. I normally go under the one chain like that. But I found it left this really big hole in the chain and it looks horrible. So watching Beth's video one day, I noticed that Beth goes under two chains and it makes it look so much better. So with that being said, that's number one and that's number two. So I normally used to go just like that. But I want to go... into here and going into there you will get two loops on the top of your hook and then the one on the bottom all right so pull through and then pull through and that's your single crochet do that again So you keep going into there. See where that V is here? You're going into there. And I personally think this looks so much better. And I cannot believe that for so many years, like at least 10, I've been doing it the other way. Alrighty, so single crochet back until you get to your hat. I've crocheted along my chain and I'm coming back to my hat. I have one, one chain left. Then I'm going to work into my hat. So into the chain one space, single crochet. If you find that's too much of a gap, you could single crochet into the top of that double crochet there. Let's try that one. Let's see if that looks better. Yeah, I think that looks better. So double crochet into, uh, sorry, single crochet into the double crochet. Single crochet into the chain one space. And also the double crochet. And repeat this around until we get to our chain. When we get to our chain, we'll be single crocheting in every chain stitch. So we're going to keep going until we get to... Where are we? Where is it? There we go. Until we get to that next chain and then single crochet up, or whatever stitch you're using, up the chain. And I will meet up with you when we get to the end of the other chain. I have crocheted all the way across and I'm now at the other end of the other chain. Now if you want to change colours on your strap section, I have already cut my yarn off and I'll take that out and show what I did. So in my last chain, go into the stitch, pull up a loop. And then you cut your yarn and drop that one down. And this is actually a different colour. I don't know if you can tell in the video. And excuse the lighting in this section. I am actually filming at night time. And I only just need to show you this little bit. So I just thought I'd quickly show you. Because it got dark whilst I was making the project. So did you see that? I'm too busy talking and not actually showing you what I was doing. So you've got your two loops. Lay the yarn over the top of the hook and then pull through. And it, it doesn't matter what stitch you were doing, half double crochet, you would have three loops on your hook. And just before you do that last part, when you pull that loop through all loop, the last loops on your hook, that's when you put your new colour in. And then you just need to pull down on the yarn a little bit and then continue as normal. So single crochet, chain one, and actually when I do a half double crochet I chain one as well 
And normally you would count that chain as your stitch, but I actually just ignore the chain. I find it gives it a neater edge. And then I continue on with the stitch. And you're going to single crochet. My yarn's got stuck. Going into each stitch. And then you crochet all the way. And when we come back down our chain, see my chain's all twisted. See how it's gone all funny? It's because it's a single crochet. When you do a few more rows, it will flatten out. So we're going to go down our chain and then across here, across our hat, working a single crochet in all those stitches. And then continuing on just as working across there and to the other end of the chain. And you can repeat that for as many rows as you need onto your onto your hat. Alrighty, so I will do a few more rows and I will see you in the morning. But if you're watching this video. It's actually only going to be a few seconds. I have just completed my last stitch and I can cut off my yarn. Make a chain one and then pull through. And as you can see I've got quite a few ends when I change colours on the other side. What I decided to do was one row, you can't really tell on the camera, you can't really tell in real life. The different colours, the ones on the outside are a darker yellow than the two middle ones. So I did four rows all together. Depending on the stitch that you're using, you could do more or you might need less. So I just turn the work around and then I just go under the loops that created by the, the stitch. So go about an inch or two inches. Depending on how much yarn you've got when you cut it off, then you can work your way back across. But skip the first stitch and then go into the second one, and that will capture the yarn in that stitch and it won't come out. So just trim off your end. So in all the other ends, and then in a second, I'll show you what my hat looks like. Hello. So I finished my hat and this is the one that I was doing for the tutorial and I stuck it on many because it is a little bit small for me. Um, this would be good for someone who didn't want it for all their hair. But see it's a little bit slouchy on him, he's got a bigger head. But I'll show you what it looks like on me anyway. So I've got my hair up. I mean, I, have, I do have a lot of hair, but people with dreadlocks and stuff have so much more hair, so. Alrighty, so you can see my hair. So basically you just tie a knot in the back. And then just wrap it around your head. And then you can wrap it however you like. You can wrap it straight to the back. Okay, so you'd probably use a mirror when you were doing this, not on your video camera. I'll just pull a little bit to... Because when you tie... <laughs> like I've got ears. Because <laughs> when you tie it up, it becomes a little bit tighter. So tuck in all your ends. Like I said, you would use a mirror to do this. I'm sorry for squinting it. I'm outside and it's a little bit bright. So I don't know if that looks any good because I don't have a mirror to look in. But that's the general gist of how you wear it. So this is the other one that I did. This is a lot longer. This one has 13 rows. And I also used the bigger hook for that one. I think I actually did 13 rows on this one. I did, I did do 13 rows, but because of the hook size difference you can see there's at least a two row difference there in sizing. So I'll show you this one, this one works a lot better with all my hair. 
because it's a lot bigger as you can tell it's a lot baggier but because you tie it up it doesn't matter so these hats would be great for sort of like a one size fits all in the adults version like obviously this wouldn't fit a kid Da -da -da. Up and around. So people with dreadlocks, you obviously have a lot more hair than I do and you have that big section that you can wrap it around and make it look really cool. It's kind of a bit wasted on my head, isn't it, this hat? But only see so you, you tie it up and also um, ladies and, and gentlemen do, they have just a lot of hair. I don't really have that much for this hat. It doesn't really doesn't really fill it out much. Um, I don't know what you call them, like it's braids or I know it's dreadlocks, but great for messy hair days when you sorry, that was a bug. When you don't want to do your hair, you can just put it on and wrap it up. So of course you can tuck these sections in. Like I said, it'd be better if it had a mirror. I'm sitting quite a way away from the camera, so. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please share your creations on my Facebook page. This would look better if it was slouching down a bit more. Share your creations on my Facebook page. You can also email me if you want to. If you don't want to share it on Facebook, my email address is in the description box below the video. And you're most welcome to email me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, happy crochet. See ya.